You may not realize it quite yet, but you've just entered the world of high stakes video creation, and we're going to talk all about it today. To share a little bit of inside baseball, Art Episode 3, the last video on the channel, was plagued by technical issues. I can't even tell you how many times I had to reshoot it and how frustrated I was by the end of it. Throughout that process, I was messing around with every piece of my setup, and I spent a lot of time fiddling with my camera, sometimes while I was recording something like this. I was kind of leaning forward and messing with it. And in watching back all of those little clips of me nonchalantly fiddling with settings on my camera, I realized that the leaned-in version of me, the slightly closer to the camera, speaking more directly to it format, kind of appealed to me. And I realized this long before the final shoot of the third episode of the art series. And the thing that's very odd about that is that after I realized it, I didn't change anything. It seems a little counterintuitive to me even looking back on it. I found something that I thought looked better or that I wanted to experiment with, and then rather than just adopting it and trying it out, I made a whole litany of excuses. I talked about the fact that I wanted consistency between the three videos, and I wanted to not try it out in such a high-stakes environment. And then I thought a bit about the stakes and realized that the stakes are staggeringly low. <laughs> I've set the bar for success for this channel at me experimenting, learning, and failing publicly. One, that's a little weird because, you know, I've created a situation in which succeeding is failing, sounds a bit paradoxical, whatever. But the point is that the stakes are not high. The stakes are the exact opposite of high, and this is supposed to be an environment for me to experiment, and yet I found myself not experimenting. My first explanation for that curious behavior was, well, maybe I'm not really bought in to this mission statement, right? Maybe I'm not really excited about failing publicly, and that's true. That is a daily struggle for me, and it is perhaps the biggest growth opportunity for me with the work that I'm doing right now. The opportunity for me to fail and like it is there, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. But beyond my lacking allegiance to the goal of the work that I'm doing here, I think there's a second more fundamental reason that I was so resistant to the idea of changing it. And for as long as I can remember, I've referred to this as human inertia. So as a reminder, inertia is the idea that objects at rest tend to stay at rest, objects in motion tend to stay in motion, or more generally, things like to keep doing what they're doing. And personally, my own inertia is often off the charts. The humorous example that I use for this is I was working for a small company. It got bought by a larger company that I was decidedly not fond of. And so eventually I decided that I would have to leave. And it only took me eight years and having another job offer on the table to get me out. <laughs> so clearly I have some inertia even when it comes to things that I don't particularly like or am not particularly comfortable with. And I don't think that I'm alone in struggling with inertia of changing my circumstance or changing things about my life. I think that that's a pretty common human experience. It's typified in the expression, better the devil that you know than the devil that you don't, implying that the unknowns in the world are perhaps the scariest. And that was a bit of an aha moment for me. I realized that in a way, I think that human inertia gets very tangled up with the fear of the unknown, right? The idea that 
our current circumstances, even if they are suboptimal or uncomfortable or not the best, are potentially better than the downsides of a host, an infinite number of potential futures. And so as a result, there's this interesting interplay where the unknown is so easy to demonize and so terrifying because it encompasses and encapsulates everything. And this got me thinking, what is the opposite of fear of the unknown? And without doing any Google searches or anything like that, the first thing that popped into my head was hope of the unknown. And that sounded very strange and a bit foreign. And I later found out that it is the title of an anthology of poetry, but not much else. And so then I did a bit more digging and realized that the actual likely antonym of fear of the unknown is curiosity for the unknown. This idea of being more curious, excited, interested in the thing that we don't know than the alternative. And that may have seemed obvious to you, and <laughs> if so, I apologize for not coming to that conclusion myself sooner. But it brought forth an aha moment that I hadn't had up until that point. And that has to do with fear of the unknown, and I think the reason that it is kind of programmed into us. Specifically, it's because of how dangerous curiosity can be. And I'm going to use kind of like a silly reductive example, but the number of people that have been killed by fearing a spider that they don't know if it's poisonous or not is probably significantly lower than the number of people who have died because they were curious whether a spider was poisonous or not seems that if we take like a kind of very reductive natural selection type of view, that curiosity is dangerous and fear is safe. We, we touched on this actually in a previous video when I was talking about uh, a rustle in the leaves and kind of living an anxious life. But yet again, we have an example here where my inertia is keeping me in the status quo which is something that kind of empirically we know is not fatal, right? The status quo has not killed me yet. So staying in the status quo is in a way a protective measure that makes it more likely for me to survive so that I can add my DNA to the genetic pool of humanity. And that is far more useful when we're talking about poisonous spiders than when we are talking about changing the framing of a video. Yet, I don't think that our minds have the ability to differentiate between the two. The fear of the unknown, the devil that we don't know, is always demonized. It is always something that we are wary of and concerned about because the unknown represents infinite potential and it also represents things that in that infinite potential could do harm to us. And this light bulb moment for me, right, in thinking about this, in trying to decide what I wanted to talk about this week, it made me realize that curiosity is by far my preference. I would much rather approach this channel, these videos, with curiosity and experimentation because the stakes are low, because I have created this in a way where I'm not going to live or die <laughs> based on if people like this video or like the framing of this video or not. And so that's the short aha moment that I wanted to share this week. I've just been thinking a lot about the difficulty that I had making a rather small change in a space that is designed for experimentation. And I wanted to articulate it in hopes that it would cement in me a desire to be more creative and be more experimental in the approaches that I take. So 
For now, that's all I really wanted to talk about. This has been a short one, but I appreciate you coming as always. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Not a potamus. Ponderous.